Let's bring in our political editor now, Andrew Clennell, who has also been trying to get through these 29 pages since it dropped in the last few minutes. Andrew, as Trudy was taking us across there, essentially when it comes to the legality of this issue, it looks like Scott Morrison is out of the woods, but the Solicitor General clearly unimpressed, saying that uh, essentially, uh, in his opinion, it was not consistent with responsible government. Yeah, it's as we expected, Ash, and he's suggesting changes in relation to it. Uh, he's suggesting that perhaps a legislation occur, a statutory change, so that a Prime Minister would have to declare when Ministers are sworn into various departments. So I'll read from it. It, it actually examines the case of Scott Morrison uh, swearing himself into Keith Pitt's portfolio, Industry, Science, Energy and Resources, on the uh, 15th of April 2021, says, was he validly appointed to that, administer that? Answer, yes. The Governor-General, acting on the advice of the Prime Minister, has power under Section 64 of the Constitution to appoint an existing Minister of State, including the Prime Minister, to administer an additional Department of State. The Governor-General, and it clears the Governor-General here, has no discretion to refuse to accept the Prime Minister's advice in relation to such an, an appointment nor is there any constitutional or legislative requirement for notification of such an appointment. And it says he was validly appointed in April 2021. But then uh, Stephen O'Donnell here, the, the Solicitor General, goes on saying, that said, the fact that the Parliament, the public and the other ministers who thereafter administered DISA, that's the department concurrently with Mr Morrison, were not informed of Mr Morrison's appointment, was inconsistent with the conventions and practices that form an essential part of the system of responsible government prescribed by Chapter 2 of the Constitution. And further, he says, plainly enough, it is impossible for the Parliament to hold ministers to account for the administration of departments if it does not know which ministers are responsible for which departments. So there you have it. He, he condemns Morrison's action, but he says it's legal. That's the bottom line. And suggests reform here, which I guess the Prime Minister can commit himself to today. I can't see the opposition opposing it or any crossbenchers requiring that if this ever happens again, it must be declared publicly. Yeah, you'd think that any reforms in this space would be pretty bipartisan at this point. Andrew Clonell, appreciate your analysis. Thank you.